Hey folks, uh, it's Wade here from the Shoemakers Academy. And today I want to talk a little bit about what it's like to work for a big brand and what it's like to work for a small brand and why you might choose one or the other. But before we, before I talk about that, I want to, um, I want to show you uh, shoemakersacademy.com. Um, basically, this is an online footwear education platform. Whether you're a designer or a brand builder or doing DIY projects, we've pretty much got something for you. We've got a, a full range of online courses for design development, for product managers. If you are an executive and you want to learn about the shoe business to maybe move your apparel company into shoes, or you're a college student and you really want to learn what the business is about, or you're a career changer, we've got beginner courses. Then we move all into different advanced techniques, drawing, development, quality, authentication, all that good stuff all here at shoemakersacademy.com. Check out our online courses. Um, we have a ton of books and tools. Um, basically, you know, the textbooks that we use in the course. And then also we have a bunch of DIY supplies. So if you basically read the book and then here's the materials and you can get on with it and, and, and make your own projects. Um, we've got sneaker last, we've got Air Jordan type last, we've got patterns, We've got outsoles, we've got last jacks and pliers and all this other great stuff to help you make your shoe project. So anyways, that's what that is. Um, but, but let's get back to the business. What you're here to learn about is what it's like to work for a big brand or a small brand. And, and, and I've been lucky enough to, to work for both. And when I say, you know, big brand, um, I mean something, some, a brand that's making, you know, maybe five or 8 million pairs of shoes a month, right? Or a year. You know, Nike, just for example, they, you know, at one point I remember, and this is you know, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, they were making 21 million pairs a month. Uh, it's way more than that now. So we're, now those are billion dollar companies. Uh, the biggest company I worked for was maybe 500 million, right? It, it, but, you know, the difference, you know, yeah. Well, let's get to it. Okay, so the, the benefits, uh, why would you want to work for one versus the other? Okay. Uh, when you work for a big company, your position responsibility is generally going to be really well-defined and, and small, right? And when you work for a smaller company, your, your roles in the company, whether you're a designer, developer, product manager, might not be as well-defined and they might be a lot larger, right? Um, and, and I've worked purely as a designer, purely as a developer, and then working for a smaller company, I became designer, developer, product manager, business category manager, basically everything about that product category, you know, just short of owning it, right? <laughs> so you end up with a, a lot of a different res responsibilities, but it, it affects everything about how you do your business. Um, you know, a, a big company, you will have lots of support. There's always going to be someone to ask, right? Or someone to answer to, which is not always that great either. In a, in a smaller company, um, you might be able to sort of spread your wings more. And, and, you know, I've been in a situation where it was like, I don't care what you do, just make it awesome. And let me, you know, let me approve the budgets before we go. Now, that, that's an, that's another issue too. Well, I mean, like I said, in a smaller company, you might have an idea and be able to go execute it. Your resources to execute that idea might be a lot less versus a big company where you might have a whole huge marketing chain, sales chain or whatever, telling you what you can and can't do. But the resources for what you have to do that might be, you know, millions of dollars, right? So that, that that's an interesting trade-off um, for sure. Um, you know, how much money will you, you make? Yeah. in a big company, um, sometimes there can be more hierarchy and, and structure, you know, pay grade and that kind of thing in a small company. Um, you know, there's less money to go around. However, it's a lot less defined as far as how much you can make. So, um, you know, if you work inside a company, will you get royalties? Never. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> you know, you get your paycheck and be satisfied with that. Um, uh, you know, big companies of course have maybe have better benefits. Um, you know, I've worked for some small and mediums that had fantastic benefits, um, that, that it, were improving. And then the bigger companies where all of a sudden, you know, it's like, you know, you can make more money if you take one olive out of the jar, right? And every jar has one less olive and you make more money. So if we can chisel away on your benefit, then, you know, some, sometimes big companies feel that way, smaller, medium companies, 
where you might actually know the owner of the company, it's different, right? And, and, and that's another interesting aspect too. I've worked for some smaller companies where I definitely was working with the owner of the outfit or, or knew them or they knew me. And, and that is sometimes fun, interesting, exciting. And uh, versus, you know, if you work for Nike, do you ever get to meet Phil Knight? Maybe, maybe not, right? I, 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 kind, of, I kind of doubt it, but hey, I don't know. It's, if you work for Nike and you get to meet Phil Knight, I'd love, I'd love to hear the story. Um, so, but, but, but one of the things, again, you know, smaller companies, you tend to have more freedom. You have more responsibility. When you go to China, you might find yourself chasing down all kinds of crazy stuff, right? You're, you know, way beyond what you think your job is. But if you've got to get it done, you've got to get it done. Versus a big company, they might say, you you've got a mold problem, then you go talk to the mold department, right? Um, in, in, like I said, your responsibilities might be more defined, but smaller, but you might have more resource to get it done. Um, I do remember when I was working uh, for that sort of smaller, sort of five or six million pair skateboard shoe company, interviewing somebody that came from Nike as a developer. And I was like, great, oh, this sounds like it's pretty fascinating. And, and they said they worked on maybe two projects a year with a team of people. And I was like, that's fascinating because, you know, in, in, in this skateboard shoe company I worked for, oh, you know, we probably worked on a thousand SKUs a year between colors, right? And and new models and carryovers and all that business. I mean, it was a it was a massive amount of shoes, huge amount of shoes by not that many people, right? So can you go as deep? Maybe not, you know, but it was kind of fascinating to be like, you had how many people do what? Wow. That's a, that's a lot of that's not many, you know, that's a lot of people to work on so few projects. But again, you know, when you get into a situation where it's more like a trading company sometimes, then you might have a huge amount of SKUs and not that many people. Anyways, that's something you could, you could look for and expect. Now, of course, in a big company, your chance to, to move around and switch departments, all that stuff, you know, you have way more chance to do that. If you work for a company that makes, you know, bicycle shoes, rock climbing shoes, snowboard boots, running shoe, basketball, any of those other things, then you have a chance to move departments and move around. You know, smaller companies tend to specialize on one thing. So you really better enjoy snowboarding or skateboarding because that's what you're going to work on. Your chance to, to move into other departments is maybe less. Now, in a bigger company, you have a better chance to move, say, from, you know, trade finance or import duty into development because it's a huge organization. And there's people going in and out all the time. Uh, smaller companies, you know, tend to, of course, there's still turnover, but but I, you know, if you're only 20 people, your, your headcount might change one or two or three people a year. That's it. And, you know, a company like Nike, there's hundreds or thousands going in and out every year. So there's always something, you know, position change open in another department. Now, um, you know, I find it fascinating that from bigger company to smaller companies, when you, when you're traveling, right, when you're traveling for a smaller company, you're representing your brand to the factory in a big company. Not necessarily. In fact, you might never go to the factory, right? But for a small brand, if you're going overseas, you might be the only one in your company that visits the factory. So all of a sudden, it's it might be on you to carry the relationship, right? Um, so that means you might you might meet the boss, versus in a big company, you would you would never meet the boss of the factory. That you would just go work with the development team, and that's it. So, uh, you know what what do I prefer? Um, you know. There's no substitute for working for a company that has a lot of resource. And as a creative person, if you have an amazing idea that takes a lot of money, then you could do that. But if you, you know, if you're working for a smaller company that's sort of cash strapped and doesn't have the same resource, I mean, it's a it's a different creative problem to to try to innovate and do these things without as much money versus, you know, if you work for Nike and you've got a giant budget. Now, now Nike's not always all that, right? They still are subdivided by departments, right? It is a giant company, but the product categories within it aren't necessarily humongous either. So that way too. And I think that that's a little bit too where if you work for a company like Burton, they have all the resources in the world to throw at just the problem of snowboarding. 
if you're working for say the snow boot department of one of those bigger brands then you know your resources to put to that problem are never going to be as much as burton's yes the company is in back bigger but but burton is going to dedicate way more resource to that problem so again this is a little bit where you got to decide if you're passionate about one particular sport in one particular interest then yeah go work for a brand that just does that right and and it can be really fun and exciting to work for a small brand where you have you know it might be a, seem like a smaller victory you know to have great sell through or new products a lot but you know you're you're more a part sometimes if you feel like you can be more a part of it right if, if it's a big win and if you're working for a smaller company your your chance to have a big impact is 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 you have a big better chance to have a big impact uh, but then it's a lot of responsibility too you work for a small company and you mess up man it's on you right and there's there's a lot less sort of safety net versus you know if you know if you're working for a large company adidas puma nike whatever there's there might be 40 people involved on in this project so the the success of one person or failure of one person you know of course it does matter but it doesn't matter as much versus small company you know, one's mistake could be could be huge, and so the responsibilities as as a, as a designer, as a developer for a small company, it's important, man. Because if you mess up, man, the lights can go out, right? So it's important. So, anyways, uh, you know, my, you know, like I said, you know, the, you know, the the, I've been lucky enough to work for sort of middle sized companies that are committed to to innovation and and are able to invest resources to get it done um you know yeah of course there's been issues where it's like yeah we can't do that it doesn't make sense financially right but again that availability of capital for development or the amount of manpower becomes a becomes another creative problem or challenge to solve so you know my my uh here, here's the other thing too you know small shoe companies are in every city in the world so if you can get into a small company and get started, great. You might not have to move across the country to do it. You know, Nike, they have, you know, their headquarters, but they do employ people all over the world, of course. Um, you know, and once you get into, uh, if you move in, say you move to Portland, so many other shoe companies are up there. Your chance to work at one of those other brands or move around from one to another is, is pretty big too. Um, I grew up in rural Michigan and in Wolverine happened to be about 45 miles from where I grew up. And, and that's a massive shoe company, tons of brands, right? If I ever wanted to move back home from California, I could probably go hunt down for a job over there. And that's an interesting sort of opportunity, right? It could, could be. Um, but again, it, a lot of it comes down to what's your passion and what is your chance to get in? Sometimes it's easier to get in at a small job in a big company, right? And wait, in the case you're in, and then you can sort of take that big brand cachet and, and move it into a smaller brand that maybe specializes in what your interest is in. So there's no right answer, there's no wrong answer, but just um, it, it's it's interesting to think about what are the trade-offs for the two. Um, you know, I've had I've had great adventures working for both big and small companies. Um, you know, it's it's hard to go wrong if you're in the business and you're in the right place and you've got and you're with surrounded by people that are passionate about what they're doing. It's fun regardless of big or small. So just get into it. Uh, but that said, you know, uh, thank you for, for watching and, and, you know, to help you get into the business, you know, that's why we've written these books and created these courses, whether you work for a big company or a small company, or, or you're, you're trying to expand your role or get into something different. Um, I've had lots of folks that, that got into a position at a Nike or a Puma or Adidas that want to move out of trade finance and want to, for example, that want to get into the development department. So what are they going to do? They're going to, they're going to want to learn about product development. And that's what all these books and courses and materials are for. So, so basically, you know, have at it. Hey, if you, if you dream of getting into the shoe business, but you can't do it for whatever reason, then Hey, you can still, you know, if you're a sneakerhead and you still want to see how it goes together, then yeah, try how shoes are made, take a course or two or build it in your garage, have fun with it. I mean, the, the, the shoe business has been an amazing adventure for me working in big companies and small. And, um, you know, I hope you can have a chance to enjoy it too. So that's it, folks.